guys. I am here to point out a few features on our uh, modules on Canvas and uh, kind of key you into a few things that I want you to take a look at, play around with, and basically give you kind of a potluck of ideas that we're going to dive into. So if you can start poking around, this is going to serve you well. You should have some questions after this, um, but that's kind of what just what the class is about. So right now I've just have in front of us uh, our modules and this energy in all forms title. Um, this video that I'm recording now I'll put underneath this header. Uh, but the skate park simulation, the table of energies, and the power plant map are the things I wanted to show you. So first of all, the skate park is something that you've seen in class. Uh, but I've just set it up here so that we've got um, the world paused and I can lift our dog into the air. And I've set up a skate track, a skate park, so that I can put uh, Al, the dog, here on the track. I happen to have no friction. I happen to have the dog stuck to the track. These are all defaults. And... Um, it's a pretty big dog, 60 kilograms. So if I hit play, that sets everything up to move along. And as we found in class the other day, the dog's starting height and the dog's finishing height are the same. But I've also turned on some other features here. And these are features of these different energies. I call the moving energy or kinetic energy and the energy of state or energy of position or stored energy is probably the best way to describe it um, here officially called potential energy and these energies here always add up to a total energy we find i can zoom in just to make that bigger it's an arbitrary scale you can do the same thing you can analyze how this is all going. You can even put a pie chart on top of Al the dog. And you can think about what's going on here, why that is. I'll go ahead and pause this. I'll move the dog around. See different things going on. You should do the same thing. I'll put the dog back on the track here at the five meter mark. Set it into motion. Goes back to the five meter mark. Play with this, see what you observe. Mess with the track, make your own track. And then, I'm sure you're bothered that I don't have anything in this column here. And certainly there's this red box in the legend that suggests there could be red here and that's not showing up this thing called thermal energy I'm going to pause it here but just for well because I'm going to turn friction on and that's kind of a real world thing you should do the same and then I'll set everything in motion And it's interesting that then the red bar goes up, but only at certain times. And it doesn't go down like the potential in the kinetic. And you can't see my eyeballs, but I've just been staring at this over here on the left. Now I see Al the dog is kind of in a sad state of affairs. Don't know what that means. We'll play with that later. That's uh, something to take a look at. Again, if you go to the modules, that's the skate park simulation. If you go to this thing called table of energies, here's uh, about the next three hours of your life. That table of energies should take you to a document that looks like this. This is from a textbook I no longer use, but I really like this table. Um, I like it, first of all, because it's got a whole bunch of stuff and it doesn't make a lot of sense. 
and you know me at this point, that's exactly the kind of thing I love to throw at you. Uh, but some things to point out is that this is a table of energy per stuff or energy per gram, which is to say how much energy would you have if everything were equal across all these things. Everything had a gram of whatever thing they're talking about. So a gram of coal right here would have six food calories, we say. That's what these big C calories are. Or 27,000 joules, whatever that is. Or it would be worth 10, uh, would be 10 times as energy filled as TNT, dynamite, explosives. Sorry, I, I skipped uh, this 10, the 10 for the coal. As I say those words, you should kind of think to yourself, that's nonsense. How can I compare explosives TNT to coal or to butter or to ethanol or to gasoline, things I put in my car or to chocolate chip cookies? How can you say chocolate chip cookies is eight times as energetic energy filled as TNT and explosive. What does that mean? And furthermore, when you talk about calories, I'm guessing you've noticed that calories are the kinds of things that we put on labels on our food. They say we should have 2000 food calories a day. You know, when they say you've had enough fats or enough sodium or enough calories, they're basing it on a 2,000 calorie amount. So what does that mean? Why would we be talking about explosives and coal and alcohol and gasoline and uranium in terms of food calories? I'm pretty sure no one eats natural gas. No one eats coal. No one eats, well, Certainly we could eat a stick of butter. Certainly we could eat some chocolate chip cookies. Only five calories for these chocolate chip cookies. So that's five calories per gram, which is a very small amount. It's just a, you know, a piece of the cookie. Hmm. So what do we make of this? Also, and it's, it's not exact, but it's close. These things called watt hours are supposed to be equivalent to food calories. In other words, a chocolate chip cookie has five food calories for every gram or five watt hours for every gram. A watt hour is a weird unit, but we're saying it's the same kind of thing. This, just so you know, is a watt multiplied by an hour. That's the kind of unit it is. I think of a watt as a speed, it's a rate, it's how fast you use something, and it's being multiplied by some amount of time. How long have you used it? You've done these kind of calculations before, whether you know it or not. You might have even done it just kind of in your gut, not even in your head. We'll get to that. What I'd like you to do for now is just kind of stare at this, jot down some questions, wonder a bit, scratch your head, do not eat coal, but maybe chew on a chocolate chip cookie and wonder why you're doing that instead of eating coal or gasoline. Okay, we'll make sense of this later. I'm going to ask you later how many chocolate chip cookies should you eat in order to run your hair dryer. That's for another day. The last thing I want to show you is this PowerPoint plant map. This is made by Dr. Schroeder in our physics department. He's made this map. Um, you can zoom in and out of this map. You can scroll back and forth. For whatever reason, it's kind of glitchy on my um, browser here. So I'll just show you the features. This is the map of the United States. There's your zoom in and out. You can scroll back and forth. Oh, that's what I wanted not to do. Okay, it's all right. I wanted to scroll down here to show you this key that says things in black are coal, things in 
uh, orangish or natural gas. Uh, Purple-ish is nuclear. Dark blue, bright blue is hydroelectric. Light blue is wind. Bright yellow is solar. These are supposed to represent sources of electricity on what we call the grid of the United States. So if I zoom out just a little bit, okay. You see, hey, here's the United States. You probably know that this is Utah and you see some coal. There's some natural gas in here. But if you go other places, you see other kinds of things. This blue is the Columbia River. I grew up here, uh, way over there. And you can imagine lots of blue. Well, there's reasons you can imagine. Lots of light blue, wind, over here for reasons. A wide array of colors over here for reasons. You should take a look at this. And in addition to zooming in and out, you can also change time. So if I go back in time, this just happens to be based on the data that Dan had when he made this, and I click 2007 instead of 2020, well, it's something you could do, and you should. And why would we talk about coal, and what would we, what would we expect of coal on this map? And why are we talking about coal and natural gas, but not, well, hey, here's natural gas, here's coal. Why not butter? Why not chocolate chip cookies on our energy map? Also, just so you know, if you go back to the map, if I click on one of these, I happen to like this one in the middle of Utah, it says this is in Millard County. It says it's here's some name. Here's what it does. Basically, here's the source of energy. Also note this one in particular. I'm not sure if this is old information, but it's been true for a long time. It was operated by Los Angeles, Southern California. The energy produced by that particular power plant coal plant in Delta, Utah, uh, has traditionally sent its electricity to Southern California with Utah coal, which is cool, interesting. Huh. This one down here, that little blue hydroelectric on the border of Arizona and Utah, you can zoom in on that. That happens to be Glen Canyon Dam at the base of Lake Powell. And if you go back in time, you'll see a coal plant. Let's see if I can do that. If I just go back to 2019, sure enough, there's a dark black dot there for a coal plant that was opened a year before, but not the following year. You should have questions about that. You can also, I said I wasn't gonna do that, but I can't help myself, go back to 2007 and compare to 2020. There's the idea that all that coal is being replaced by solar, maybe wind, maybe, but there's other stuff going on. Pay attention to, well, I've said too much already. Anyway, go to the course modules, play with those. There's pretty much your entire spring break is right there. You should have a good time. I'll see you after spring break. We'll talk about these things and more. We'll start to make sense of them. I'm glad you'll have stared at this for a while and thought about it and uh, enjoy. Let me know if you have questions.